So the first question says match the following list A with the which are the schools and concepts of criticism and list B which are the set of critics. So your list one is A formalism, second is new critics, third is psychological theory of the value of literature, fourth is literary art as archetypal image and the list of critics include John, John Crowe Ransom, so it's John John Crowe Ransom. Uh, the Jungians, so from Carl Jung, Victor Slovatsky and I.A. Richards, right? So these are your four options. Now a little bit about all these schools. What is formalism? Formalism is a, was a Russian school of criticism. Victor Slovatsky was an important propounder, right? Um, what, was the, uh, what was the school talking about? The school was talking about focusing on the form, right? Focusing on the form of literature. So, rather than focusing on the content of literature, right? So, when they were looking at poems, they were trying to understand the rhyme scheme that was present in the poem, the kind of words that were used, the kind of uh, the kind of rhythm that was created, right? So, it, the focus was on form and was on style rather than on content. The new critics was also of the same belief. So, while Russian uh, the formalism was in Russia, new criticism was in America. Important propounders again, John Croy Ransom, very important. I. A. Richards also. Uh, coined the term practical criticism for new criticism. So another question that could be asked is what is the other name or you could be asked what is practical criticism, right? So you must know that new criticism only, uh, it's another name that I. A. Richards had coined for new criticism. So what is new criticism? Again, the same thing where you need to focus on the form and the style of the text more than focusing on what the content is about, right? And keeping the text inside, like not going to the author or not going to the intention of the author or not going as to how the readers are feeling in the attempt to understand the text. So new criticism, um, Wimsett and Beardsley have also coined the terms of intentional fallacy and affective fallacy. Right? Intentional is that you shouldn't focus on what the intention of the author is. And effective fallacy is you shouldn't focus while trying to understand the text as to what the kind of effect that is having on the readers. Also, they say that you shouldn't focus on whenever we've been asked to uh, give an analysis of the text, there is a tendency to give the summary. Whereas a summary is never the analysis of a text. Right? So, new critics would be John Crowe Ransom. So, now this again, I.A. Richards is also a very important new critic. But there is another option that fits I.A. Richards better. So, and in any uh, objective type exam, it's always about the best option that could fit in. Right? So, the third one, Psychological Theory of Value of Literature is a chapter from I.A. Richards text, which I told you about right now, The Principles of Literary Criticism. Okay? So, uh, third is going to be I.A. Richards. And literary art as archetype image is Jung, Carl Jung. Carl Jung is also studied the idea of myth. So, he's an important uh, person when it comes to myth criticism, right? What is myth criticism? Myth criticism basically in literature especially tries to trace archetypes that exist in all literature for you to understand uh, how experiences influence your actions, right? And how collective influ uh, experiences influence all of our actions as humanity, right? So, the option and the answer here is going to be A. Moving on. Little Nell is a character in Dickens's A. David Copperfield B. Old Curiosity Shop C. Bleak House D. Great Expectations Now, all of Dickens's, uh, Dickens' novels are important. The main character, the main storyline, the main plotline, especially the ones that are mentioned. David Copperfield, Great Expectations Somewhat Old Curiosity Shop, Hard Times Right? And then uh, the tale of two cities. All these you must look at in detail in terms of the characters that are covered, the antagonists that exist and all these lines. So hard times, the first line is very important. Teach these boys and girls nothing but facts, right? Uh, here again, the answer is uh, old curiosity shop, little L. This is a net question, right? This is featured in the exam once. So... For Dickens, anyways, the uh, the characters, the text, the novels, and the plot lines are important, right? Then moving on. Who among the following English poets define poetic imagination as a repetition in the finite mind of the eternal act of creation in the infinite I am, right? 
so the idea of poetic imagination the idea of fancy versus imagination is coleridge right little bit about that what does what is uh, what is fancy according to coleridge so fancy according to him is mechanical operations of the mind right these are mechanical operations there is nothing artistic about fancy 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 is all mechanical there is nothing uh, there is no artistic bend to the fancy right then he talk he starts talking about imagination imagination he says are two kinds there is the primary imagination and there is the secondary imagination right for primary imagination he says it's the power of receiving impressions of the eternal world through senses right so just receiving the receiving act the act of receiving is primary imagination then what is secondary imagination he says secondary imagination is creation right now what does secondary imagination entail it a uh, very popular line that is used and it's often quoted is there is it dissolves diffuses dissipates in order to recreate right so there the secondary imagination is the space of recreation while primary imagination is let, just letting you receive fancy he says is mechanical primary lets you receive through your senses your uh, and you sort of make sense of everything but after making sense in the deconstructionist sense when you start breaking it down and start creating your own is where secondary imagination comes into play right so the eternal act of creation in the infinite i am right the eternal act of constantly creating the mind is finite but you're constantly creating again a de very deconstructive way of looking at things saying that uh, there is one receiving where i understand and then there is going to be the finite receiving that i get and then there is going to be the infinite creation of i that i understand right so it's coleridge here the text uh, which where this features is biographical biographical literary right book 13 right chapter 13 rather okay so this is the 13th chapter where it features and it's important for you to know these concepts they've quite often been asked in the exam also moving on the etymological meaning of the word trope is gesture turning mirror desire right so trope the word means to turn so the answer here is turning but that's not important for us here the important fact for us here is it's usually used as a figure of speech right so what what are the kind of figure of speeches that are covered under trope so trope is turning right so it's used it's it's a word or a phrase that you used in a different fashion than what it actually means right so a rose otherwise means a flower but if in a summary your love love as rose right so rose otherwise is a flower but when you use it in a simile right the usage of the word rose changes to compare it to love right so the word the manner in which rose is rose is otherwise used is changed to uh, to mean something else right so turning of the meaning of a word to mean something else is trope so your simile metaphors all these come in the category of trope and the meaning of the word trope is turn moving on which american poet wrote i sound my barbaric yawp over the roofs of the world is it robert lowell is it walt whitman is it wallace stevens or is it langston hughes right your answer here is walt whitman walt whitman is believe, believed to be a very optimistic poet some of his poems include important poems here so this one is from songs of myself right there is another important text leaves of grass right and a small poem that he had written on the death of abraham lincoln in 1866 oh captain my captain this one you should look at look at it in detail these are longish poems but this one you should remember the lines also for okay so uh, again uh, walt whitman american poet right uh, he he is believed to uh, follow two schools there is one which is the realist school so he followed realism and there is also transcendentalism so there could be a question as to which school 
of thought did Walt Whitman started writing? Which school of thought or perspective did Walt Whitman started writing his poetry from? So there is also the transcendentalism. What was transcendentalism? Transcendentalism in eighteen forties New England was a reaction against was a reaction against rationalism, and it sort of propounded the idea that divinity pervades all humanity and nature. Right? So divinity. is going to come before all humanity and all nature so divinity is going to transcend everything right so the transcendental signifier as derrida would call it here becomes divinity right so your answer here is walt whitman moving on to the next question match the following list so there are novels and there are novelists and then there are novels right the first one here is margaret lawrence the second one is margaret atwood Sinclair Ross is the third one, and then there is Thomas King. The novels that are mentioned are *Surfacing*, *The Stone Angel*, *Medicine River*, and the fourth one, *As for Me and My House*. Now, world literature, an important portion. And who are all these? Where? What is the place that all these authors belong to? All these are Canadian authors, right? Canadian authors, Margaret. All these, in fact, all these four are very important authors. And the questions included here. to may only make sure that you know the important works of these authors right so a little bit little bit facts about each and just going through which work is uh, whose and also for world literature what i've noticed is in your net exam because the questions are not exhausted as yet it's usually author work matching right so match the work with the author or there is a brief just minutely touching on the character or the plot line like right it does not go into as much depth as it goes with british literature because a lot of questions of british literature have already been exhausted so the first one margaret lawrence margaret lawrence has written stone angel stone stone angel is a 1964 text it's about a woman a, an old woman who's 90 years old she's her name is hagar and she's looking back at her life the kind of life that she's led, led right margaret lawrence is writes in a fictional town of manavaka important question manavaka in manitoba right important question about fictional town so hardy's fictional town is wessex your rk narayan is malgudi right the question about the fictional town what is margaret lawrence fictional town manavaka in manitoba it's an important question i'm repeating it again and hardy's fictional town is wessex rk narayan's is malgudi right so margaret lawrence like i said stone angel 1964 text about a 90 year old woman who's looking back into her who's looking back to her life and sort of analyzing it right surfacing is a text by margaret atwood margaret atwood's text again important you must look at them the summaries also you must look at those in detail especially because your hands may your handmade tale is there are seasons of handmade tale coming so it becomes a thing of uh, it's a contemporary thing right it's already it's on air the episodes are available so it's a text that's been adapted on screen as well so it becomes important now there is elias grace that is also important so you must look at her texts in detail so what is this one about this one is about a woman who returns to her hometown of canada so there is a dual uh, anxiety that she is facing of being a gendered of of a gendered identity as well as nationalism the problem of nationalism as well as of being a gendered national uh, a gendered national right so these are the problems that she faces in the text the third one sinclair ross uh, sinclair ross the text name is as for me and my house and it's set in the great depression right so this one is your fourth um the, uh, the 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 time that the book was written is 1941 right talks about the great depression and then medicine river is a text by thomas king uh, the text was about it's about a group of people and their lives in western canada right so your answer here becomes d moving on then to the next question so thomas wyatt and earl of surrey earl of surrey jointly brought out turtles misleni during the renaissance identify the name of earl of surrey from the following is it thomas lodge is it thomas nash is it thomas sackwell or is it henry howard right so the answer here is henry howard now who are these two individuals who are being talked of thomas wyatt and earl of surrey or henry howard are people 
who can be or called actually the fathers of the english english sonnet right because a they both of them together translated petrarchan sonnets into english petrarch was an italian italian poet who wrote sonnets right so they translated petrarchan sonnets into english right so they are known as the fathers of english sonnet then they are also the ones who sort of began using the english sonnet which is also today known as the shakespearean sonnet because shakespeare went on, went on to write 154 sonnets in that same english sonnet form right uh, what is the rhyme scheme of the english sonnet is again a question that could be asked It's a b a b c d c d e f e f g g right this is the rhyme scheme so it has three quatrains and a closing couplet right so these are uh, the, this is the rhyme scheme of an english sonnet uh english sonnet was used by shakespeare extensively because he went on to write 154 sonnets in that right but it was properly structured and given a structure by wyatt and surrey right so now moving on to the next question so the the question asks you what is the real name of what is the name of the earl of surrey because he is usually known as the earl of surrey only uh, and i remember telling in my class also that the sonnet form was given to us by wyatt and earl of surrey right so the name the actual name for my students as well is henry howard Moving on then to the next question. Power circulates in all directions, to and from all levels, at all times. Who said this? Edward Said, Michael Foucault, Jacques Derrida, or Rolla Bath? Right. So who's the person who's talked about power? Just in case you are not sure as to where a particular line is coming from, which is obviously difficult to understand because literary texts are huge. Foucault is the one who usually talks about power. and the nexus of power and knowledge right so foucault is the one who's talked of power foucault is the one who's extensively talked of power and how power is being used to manipulate individuals right how power is become and power and knowledge has become means to manipulate individuals into being subjects of ideology right so foucault is constantly been talking about this and so any any time you see a question that talks extensively about power power circulating at all times power being at the center sort of understand that he is talking the, the question wants you to sort of mark muko more than often the answer would be correct right so your answer here is fuko other theorists here are edward said edward said orientalism important text again the contrast of the other and the self jack derrida deconstruction uh, deconstructionist theorist right deconstruction post structuralism is also called robert bath a lot of things death of the author and then also mythologies is given so a part of myth criticism also is propounded right now moving on to the next question locke's essay concerning human understanding uh, is a classic statement of dash philosophy is it aesthetic philosophy is it empiricist philosophy is it nationalist philosophy or is it realist philosophy what is aesthetic uh, aesthetic philosophy aesthetic aestheticism as a movement talked of art for art's sake right em foster oscar wilde important people associated with aestheticism aestheticism as a movement talked of art being just available for art so art need not follow any other purpose art need not be for moral art need not be for morality art need not be for teaching art need not be to tell you about history art need not be to tell you about society art should exist for art's own sake right so that is aestheticism nationalist doesn't mean anything as such nationalist any text that talks about nationalism realist text that take inspiration from the actual society right so the answer here obviously is empiricist text it's an important locke's essay is an imp important empiricist text right so what is empiricism in the first place empiricism is a theory that all knowledge is in fact based on experiences so everything about your knowledge all knowledge that you have is based on your experiences that you perceive through your senses right and through your understanding of those experiences so empiricist Uh, believe in that and john locke's essay of human understanding is a part of that so the john locke has also so he says um, all knowledge again he says the same thing all knowledge comes from experience and there is no innate knowledge that one is born with right so there is no innate knowledge that anybody is born with 
right so also here important is his idea of tabula rasa and so is his idea of tabula rasa which he says a mind is like a blank slate he says mind is like a blank slate right so there is uh, nothing that you are in no experience that you are innately born with right Ma the mind is a state of tabula rasa which is a blank slate and in this blank slate through your experiences every impression can be created and you can gain gain knowledge right so this is locke was an empiricist and the father of empiricism is bacon francis sir francis bacon is also known as the father of empiricist philosophy 